Okay, case. Looks like it's nine o'clock. <coughs> we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, with that, we welcome uh, all the guests. And also with that, I'd ask no one to do the invocation. Uh, before I pray, I'd like to say something. You know, I'm normally late, but we've had Veterans Day, and and I don't know how many veterans we got here. If they would believe, please, please hope you're hanging. I know Jerry and myself is one, and we want to thank you for your time, because we wouldn't we wouldn't be sitting here today without you people, protecting us, our past, present, and future veterans. And I thank you for your service. And I've sat here for 20 years and prayed every meeting. And I hope this will continue when I leave, because this is, you know, we don't, we don't have too many freedoms anymore, and this is one freedom we do have. So with that said, let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. We're so blessed to be in your presence. Father, as I just said, we're so thankful for our past, present, and future uh, veterans. Now, Father, we ask you to be with us this morning as we go through our meetings. And bless, bless each one here and their families. Father, we know we're not perfect. We do fall short. We give us our sin, we fall short. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Roll call. Jerry Todd. Here. David Scott. Here. Kenny Green. Here. Nolan Hamilton. Here. Don McCarty. Here. Crystal Hines. Here. Uh, approval of Treasurer's Monthly Budget Report. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item then would be approval of minutes of regular meeting for October 15th. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve the uh, minutes for the October 15th meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Now. Okay. Okay, as of October 31st, 2018, our total CDs and tax book total $657,810.37. That makes our grand total of, uh, including our checking accounts, $2,392,982.82. Any questions on the monthly report? So moved. Motion second to approve Treasurer's monthly budget report. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Uh, next item, approval of transfers. Okay, that's what I handed out to you a little bit ago. Um, we don't have any actual transfers, but we uh, do have cash transfers. Both of these from the checking, uh, general fund checking um, in the, to the jail fund, 27000 and to the LGEA fund, 7000 Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion to second approval of uh, transfers. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next item, approval of budget amendment. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> an ordinance relating to the annual budget and amendment thereof, whereas Trimble County, Kentucky has realized unbudgeted receipts, be it ordained by the Trimble County of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Section 1, current fiscal year 2018-2019. The budget for the current fiscal year is amended to increase uh, the receipts of the following funds to include unbudgeted receipts from um, the general fund, the surplus from prior year is 200,000, road fund surplus from prior year 300,000, and the LGEA fund surplus from prior year 5,000. And that will be transferred to the general fund uh, reserve for transfers, two hundred thousand. The road fund reserve for transfers, three hundred thousand. And the LGBA fund reserve for transfers, five thousand. And that makes the total uh, revenues and expenditures five hundred and five thousand dollars. Section two: the amount adjusted receipts and expenditures account in section one are for governmental purposes. And then, uh, if you choose to approve it today, on the 19th day of November, 2019. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion to second to approve the budget amendment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?
Next item, authorization to pay claims and lay claims. In the general fund, the November pre-approved court claim is total $22,305.37. And the November court claims are $36,056.71. That makes a total of the general fund claims $58,362.08. Any questions on the general fund claims? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion second. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, approve the uh, claims uh, for the general fund. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And in the road fund, the November pre approved claims are $4,068.95. And the November court claims, uh, uh, there's a correction. Instead of the $36,056.71, um, it should be $119,592.36. And that will make your total road, road fund claims $123,661.31. What do you have as November court claims? $119,592.36. Thank you. And then you got the total. Okay. Any questions on the road? Thank no move. Second. Okay, motion second to approve <coughs> the uh, claims for the road department. All those in favor? Opposed? In the jail fund, there are no November pre approved claims, and the November court claims are $21,259.85, and that makes a total of jail fund claims of $21,000. $259.85. Any questions on the jail? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion second. Approve the claims for the jail fund. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And then on the LGEA fund, the November pre approved claims are $2,535.07, and the November court claims total $4,289.67. That's a total of the LGEA claims of $6,824.74. So and motion second to approve the LGEA fund uh, claims. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day and happy Thanksgiving. Well, you too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next item, solid waste, map. map. I don't have anything. Okay. <coughs> uh, the next item was the animal shelter report for dogs. Uh, they'd taken in 13 that had been surrendered. Uh, one returned to shelter, four seized and 12 tra uh, strays. Uh, the shelter had three adoptions, five returned to owner, and 13 went to rescue. So, and you all had a copy of that, so. Uh, emergency management, Andrew. I really don't have much of an update. The team is still working at their pace, so. We don't have the road money yet? No, they've been told. Then so. they told us it's going to be November, and now they're saying December. Yep. <coughs> Next is uh, it's January. That's what I, I was getting ready to say that, but I thought, well, I'll keep my mouth shut. Uh, there's no way we can put any pressure on this or anything to get, nope. get some of this money? Federal government. Federal. They, they have not allocated any funds to any of the projects in any of our regions. Okay. Okay, next items, approval planning zoning ordinance, uh, second reading. We got a, a, an email or some stuff here. Uh, 
yesterday Friday, I think it was. Uh, I think according to the attorney that we hired, uh, we're still we're still good. So I'm gonna make a motion to approve. What do you mean the attorney we hired? Is our planning the zoning mm -hmm. attorney? No, and I believe I sent an email to add to the packet my legal findings on two issues. Um, one in regards to whether or not the first reading was appropriate, which it may have been the law is silent based upon my argument of failing to publish in summary and um, having a new copy of the amended ordinance available for the public to inspect. Um, public wasn't aware that any changes or additions had been made. Um, the second reason that I feel that, that we're not complying is statute 424, um, I'm sorry, let me back up. Statute 67.077, and it says no county ordinance shall be passed until it has been published pursuant to KRS Chapter 424. So prior to passage, the ordinance must be published by summary. And the publication that was in the paper last week just indicated fiscal court meeting and date and time. No publication has ever been made that I have seen of a summary of the planning and zoning um, ordinance. You could do it in whole or by summary. Um, my position on this because it says 424-380 the statute says an ordinance is required to be published that is adopted without compliance and with the publication requirement of this chapter it will be avoidable by a court of competent jurisdiction and the cost of any proceeding including reasonable attorney's fees for attorney of the citizen bringing the action shall be assessed against the unsuccessful party and that will be the county so if it is this court's intention to pass planning and zoning um, I just urge you to make sure the publication requirement is adhered to. I went as far and got a um, attorney general opinion that that indicates that the publication requirement should be upheld um, and the requirement for the publication shall be satisfied by publication of the title and a certified summary of the contents prepared by an attorney licensed to practice law in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Now for purpose of my argument, I think that it just needs to go according to statute to be right. Not that it should or shouldn't be passed, but just for the purpose of protecting the county from any suits that could arise out of it. If this passes and, and there is a suit brought forward, would the county attorney be defending them? So you would be defending this in court if it did go to court? I did, and I would urge you to settle. <laughs> because it would continue to increase <coughs> charges and rates. Please. Here, here's what I understand. We, we got a county attorney here tells us we're <coughs> unconstitutional more or less by doing this. Yeah, but that's the thing about it is we... Let me finish, please. Go ahead. And we're going ahead and going against it anyway. And, and here's... I mean, we're not lawyers. I mean, she's a professional. We're not. And I just times before this, I don't know if it was legal or illegal at that time, but the counties voted on this twice and voted it out. And that tells us something. Now, I know now it's illegal for the county to vote on it. I know that. I wish they could, but we know it's illegal. And we got to sit here and make a decision for the county. And I just think we're trying to ram something down somebody's throat that don't want it. It's kind of like a communist county trying to do, I mean, people have sweated and earned and worked for this, their land. And I think they have some right to say what they're going to do for their land. We, I mean, we can sit here as individuals here at this table and tell everybody what they can do with their land every day. I, I just think it's wrong. And I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I, I think it, we, we've done this process for two and a half years, and we were asked to hire an attorney because our county attorney <coughs> didn't want to represent us. And now, you know, our, our attorney that we've hired says that that we are within the law and it, all of a sudden these things keep coming up it's time to vote and I just think it, it uh, you know I, I think it's a good start for a guy I think we're going to have to start somewhere and uh, you know we, we, we pay her and she should be doing she should know what what the law was so I agree with the, with the attorney with her and I might comment um 
if you go with that, every ordinance the county has done for the last 20 years is illegal. Because yeah. it's never, ever been printed in the paper, publicized prior to a first reading. Never. Well, I'm talking about the second reading. Well, second reading either. You don't have to. That's the statute says shall. Well, we'll ask Chelsea, our attorney, that um, since you chose not to represent us, and you chose to cost the county all the legal fees mm -hmm. that we have to pay. Yes, you did. You chose not to. I told you it's a conflict of interest. No. I do have a, an opinion that says that it was not, but I feel that it would be a conflict of interest because when push comes to such shove, I represent the county in fiscal court. And so. And I can name two counties the county attorneys represent their planning and zoning and county attorney. Well, I could tell you several who don't. Yeah. Uh, I think you're wrong. Okay, well that's fine. It's just my position. That's I don't right. feel ethically able to represent the Planning and Zoning Commission and the county. Okay. And my job is to represent the county. But you could represent both. I could. The There's Bar Association told you there was not a conflict, right? You're correct. You're okay. correct. But I feel there's a conflict of interest, so okay. I won't. A motion stand. Okay. Uh, I'm going to second it. But before we take a vote, I want Chelsea to be able to explain what she came up with. Um, in terms of the public hearing, um, I'll address that issue first. There is no no law and statute or case law on point to whether after changes are made, when changes are made after the public hearing, <clears throat> whether you have to have a new public hearing pursuant to the those changes. There is, however, case law. The Court of Appeals discussed it in um, as to whether you have to have a new first reading. And I think the same standard would apply if the change was made, um, as in our case, prior to the first reading or between the first and second readings. And that's whether the changes are material and substantial. Um, my position that these are in no way material and substantial changes. We can go through the changes really quickly if you, you can give me a minute or so. I can we can discuss them. But there's no risk if this if this gets appealed, anyone can sue. So they take us to the court. The standard is: Did these changes were these changes material and substantial enough to make it such a different organ ordinance? that the people saw at the public hearing that warranted a new public hearing prior to the first reading. And so the, the first change of section 200, um, this is basically a typo correction. We moved some definitions. This, there was a reference to another part of the statute. We moved the definitions to the end of the statute and we didn't catch all the references within the text. So that was pointed out to us and, and we fixed those. It didn't change anybody's rights. It didn't change the nature of the zoning ordinance. Um, section 520, um, the, the second change, um, creates a less restrictive standard. So that didn't affect the public's rights. We actually broaden the rights. We took away um, some requirements that were dealt with the repair or replacement of nonconforming structures. <coughs> So instead of being damaged 50%, we took away the 50% requirement and we're saying if, if um, a structure, a non-conforming structure was damaged, you can replace it and put it back on the same spot. There's no requirement that you meet some sort of insurance threshold. Um, section 290 creates, it does the same uh, mistaken citation. That's not affecting people's rights. 650, the citation was the same. Um, Oh, going back to 200, I'm sorry, I misstated. Uh, the change, uh, this merely, in this, the original version of this cited to the KRS 100. That caused some confusion because people aren't accustomed to going back to the statute when you're reading, um, when you're trying to figure out how the zoning ordinance is going to affect you. So instead of just citing it, we brought in the language from KRS into the zoning ordinance. It didn't change anything. We just made it, that was our attempt to make it more clear so you didn't have that extra step while you're trying to figure out um, is, is this a yes or no for me? You didn't have to go back to find some law to take care of. Um, Section 770, those are the bulk of the text changes. 
all that is, if you read it line for line, it's just a reorganization and hopefully a clarification. We had a lot of people have problems with this, and it really is a dense provision. This one, um, this provision, section 770, deals with um, part, it, it creates an exception to a zoning requirement when you're conveying certain tracts of real estate to your family from your farm. So you, you're allowed to keep your home place in a certain amount of acreage <coughs> and parcel off minimum uh, a certain amount of requirements without getting a subdivision flat. It, it's a dense statute. We reorganized it, hopefully made it more clear. We added an explanatory note, which is not binding, um, but it didn't change any rights. If you read it line for line, the, the words might have changed, but the law did it. Um, lastly, we created uh, child, care sec uh, child care centers as a conditional use. This, isn't, this is a less restrictive standard. Instead of obtaining a variance when you're trying to get a child care center permitted, you're just going to have to get a conditional use permit. <coughs> it's less expensive, less hassle. Um, we're expanding the statute. It's not becoming more restrictive. We didn't impose, impede on any rights. I would argue this up and down, that none of these are material changes. They didn't change the nature of the, the zoning ordinance. They didn't change the, um, they didn't affect people's rights. It, it didn't make the statute misleading. It's still a zoning ordinance. This is 90 pages. We made seven changes. Um, as to whether or not um, we met the publication requirement. I'll remind you that this is a this is just what it is. It's a publication requirement. It's not a prior notice. We gave a sufficient prior notice to the public hearing, which is required, and we satisfied that. This publication requirement um, requires us to comply with with Chapter 424. That gives us 30 days after the date of enactment to get the notice in summary. Um, to meet that requirement, to get it in the paper. Um, the ordinance cannot be effective until you get the notice in the paper. So, it can, after approval, you have 30 days, according to uh, 424.130, before the statute is effective to, um, to get the notice and summary in the paper. Um, I have taken the liberty of drafting a proposed public notice. If you all want to consider it, I think you all have a copy of it. Um, it meets the criteria that that council was talking about. It uh, sufficiently describes what we're doing here. It provides a good summary. It um, takes in, the statute requires that any fees or taxes that are imposed have to the full text of that provision has to be in there. That's in there. It has to be drafted by an attorney and certified by circuit court, or fiscal court, I'm sorry. Um, all of the requirements are met in this. We have 30 days from the date of approval to meet the publication requirements. After that, the, the zoning ordinance after approval norm, normally would become effective. It won't become effective until the publication requirements have been met. So until that goes in the paper, that is the effective date for um, the ordinance. I don't, nothing compels me, compels <coughs> us to have it prior to <coughs> approval on the, uh, prior to the second reading. Nothing specifies that. It just says the ordinance can't become effective until the publication requirements are met. I think we can do that. You all talked about a hundred while ago. We're, what kind Hold of on, we're not doing that. Are you having public? No. Okay. We're well, not I'm having any public. Enough. Shut up. Pub public has no input whatsoever. You've had three public meetings. Yeah, you're damn this damn speaking for No, it's not. You're going you to even pass it. You're going to leave town. Is all of you staying in the county after this? Well, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I just wanted. I want to make sure. I know it's out I there that I'm going to leave. I'm going to be here. Well, I hope so. Okay. I hope you're here to reap the rewards. And I'm going to be here, and I'm going to try to vote it out. That's I got. I'm back right back down behind you. Judge, with all due respect, Chelsea's correct, and that is a statute that will be used <coughs> after the second reading. 
However, we're bypassing the law that's at point right now, which is before the second meeting. As part of that statute, it says, publication shall include the time, date, and place at which the county ordinance will be considered and a place within the county where a copy of the full text of the proposed ordinance is available for public inspection. And again, it says no county ordinance shall be passed until it meets that publication requirement of KRS 424. So she's absolutely right, but this statute's applicable to today, whereas that statute's applicable to after the second reading. But the requirements of 424 say you get they give you the 30 days. It's not a prior notice statute. It's a publication statute. I have 424 right in front of me and it doesn't say that. With all due respect, I think Chelsea's a wonderful lawyer. If I didn't, I wouldn't have recommended her to the court. Um, we just tend to agree to disagree on this at this point and I just want the county to do what's right. Okay, back up to the September public last public service commission. Mm -hmm. You raised your hand out there and you said, I got a couple of issues, but I'll get with Chelsea. You didn't do that. Actually, Chelsea and Matt and I met. After the September meeting, after the um, the October meeting, let's see, September, October, it would have been the August meeting, then the September, after the September meeting, and you brought up the issue, so we didn't do the, the first reading. Then Matt and Chelsea got with you. It basically basically concerned issues that you were concerned with about your own property. Um, actually, no, I have no issues with my property. Well, my property's fine. If I want to convey to my kids, I have enough to convey to my kids, thankfully. Right. But my concern is, and, and yes, since we're retroactively going back here, I have concerns regarding the content of of the of the ordinance. I don't think that it's reasonable in parts. I do think it's it's too restrictive in parts. And as I read that, I tried to put myself in the position of every person that it would affect. And if it did, if I couldn't figure out how would this affect me because I'm not a mobile homeowner, well, I called somebody and said, how does this affect you? I want to know, is this reasonable? And I got feedback. So that's how I read the ordinance because it's very convoluted, very vague, very overbroad. And I had to reach out to council as well and say, what does this mean? Because I don't get it. Those are policy concerns. Those aren't legal concerns. Zoning ordinances have been upheld since the 1920s. That's true. Um, to the extent that they're overbroad, the concerns that they're overbroad or, um, what did you say, uh, not specific in that they, um, the same ordinance essentially has been in effect in a neighboring county for 25 years. It parallels line for line with other neighboring counties, Pendleton County. Um, it, this is by no means the most restric restrictive zoning ordinance out there. As long as they, they keep going, um, I'm not concerned that this is unconstitutional. That's, I don't think, a winning argument. It is a policy argument, though. The argument might be that this is inappropriate for Trimble County at this time. And, and that's a valid concern, and you're all entitled to believe that, but it's not a legal argument. I'm just making the distinction. It's not a legal position. That's a policy position. And counties get sued on policy positions as well. <coughs> okay. Um, after hearing from the county attorney and the attorney representing uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, um, we had a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, I'd ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Okay. I vote for <coughs> Okay. Next item, approval of new phone system for Sheriff of the County Clerk's Office, uh, $3,865.45. Uh, the current system is obsolete, no longer available, and cannot be repaired. That was put in in that phone system in 2000 when the courthouse was remodeled. Uh, it went out once when I was in the county clerk's office, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, we'd had a lightning strike. It put the phone system out for the sheriff's office and the county clerk's office. Uh, for several days, uh, it was $2,000 to replace the board. Um, so that's where we are on it. Yeah, I'm sorry, how, how old did you say the other system is? It was put in 2000 when the courthouse was remodeled. 
15, 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. And that was put in by the state at that time when they remodeled at no charge. The state no longer, in fact, back, I'm guessing around 2010, when the, uh, the board went out, whatever that means, the board went out and we had to call the company. I called the state, the state recommended or said to call, I think it was Black Box or something like that out of North Carolina, <laughs> South Carolina to get that replaced and that best I remember at the time was around 2000. Could have almost updated the system. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they wouldn't do a thing until I personally gave them my credit card and paid for it in advance. So. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make the motion we uh, put, approve the new phone system for the sheriff and county clerk's offices. Second. Uh, second. Okay. Motion second to approve the new phone system for the sheriff and county clerk's office. $3,865.45. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, next item, approval of board of adjustments, which would be Tom Taylor, Diana Arnold, and Cindy Green. Cindy is Cindy Leiter. Cindy Leiter. Cindy Leiter. Leiter, yes, Cindy Leiter. <laughs> Motion to approve. <laughs> Motion second to approve the Board of Adjustments for Tom Taylor, Diana Arnold, and Cindy Leiter. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Uh, approval of Wayne Smith of Trimble County Water Board, December the 10th to December the, or December the 10th, 18th to December the 10th, of 22. Is it, this is a. This is not filling a vacancy. It's no, just a, a new appointment. Uh, I'll make a motion. To go ahead and approve Wayne for the position. Got a motion and a second. So will the water board come up with a new new person if we don't approve this, or is it to judges? Uh, they would probably come up with a recommendation. Second. Okay, motion second to approve Rain Smith as the Trimble County Water Board. Uh, for December the 10th, 18th to December the 10th of 22. All those in favor? Uh, no. Opposed? Uh, approval of county clerk <coughs> subsidy for 21,000. Uh, she feels pretty sure that things continue the way it is, we'll get her money back in full. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second to approve the county clerk subsidy for twenty-one thousand. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Approval of county clerk's two thousand nineteen budget. You all have had that and an opportunity to review. Motion to approve. No, you don't need approval. Yeah, yeah. Do you need approval on that? Yes. Second. Motion. Okay. I had a motion and. At least two seconds. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, then to approve back. the county clerk's budget for 2019, all those in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? Uh, approval of the annual order setting maximum amount for deputies and assistants for the Trimble County Clerk for 2019. Um, I think that's 157000 but I got it. Didn't have that on is that what it was? Huh? Is that what it was? I think it was your... Uh, it may have been... Yes, 157000 Is this in our packet? I didn't see it. It's a separate sheet in there somewhere. Okay. You may not have it, David, because you got yours early. Okay. The rest of them should have it. Oh yeah, I got it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, here it is. And both of those have to be uh, submitted to the uh, Department of Local Government uh, no later than December 31st. So and, and I will go over those to them. This just sets the maximum. Yes. Okay. You need a motion? I think I had a motion second. Mm -hmm. I think so. We, we did. We did. We did. We did. Okay, no. Yeah, we did. Okay. Need a motion. Second. Second. Motion second. second. To approve the annual order setting maximum amount for deputy and assistance, uh, $157,000 for the Trimble County Clerk of 2019. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, approval of replacing old oil furnace with gas heater, turner, or heating and cooling uh, was $2,950 at the road barn. That thing's been out there for years and years and years, probably back in the 70s or 80s. Uh, we've had Alpha Mechanical to work on it, and uh, it's basically, I think, used its I thought we put new gas heaters in there. We got two, but <coughs> this would replace the the oil furnace with another heater. It's a Natural the, gas. Yes. Motor oil burning furnace, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So they're going to do away, do away with it completely? Yes. And no more used oil. Right. <coughs> Can't keep it working. The gas heater we're talking about is going to hook up to the gas elements we got hit right now yes. in, into the yes. barn. Yes. And there'd be a more or a user version, more economical, the two gas heaters we had out there been out there for years but never been hooked up to what, four years ago or mm -hmm. something 34. like that. I, I don't know when they were installed, but years ago. Years and years like ago. We we moved, huh? yeah. They were there before we came on course. Not the gas heaters. They, they were there, they weren't hooked up. Okay, right. we, we, because we put the gas, we had the gas line put in there. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, do you know what efficiency this gas furnace is? It's, you know, 89. <coughs> I don't know. Okay. It'll be 80. Hmm? It'll be 80. It will be 80. I'll make a motion to go ahead and replace it with the gas unit. Okay. We'll get your service out of it. Motion second to approve uh, replacing the old oil furnace with gas heater, uh, Turner heating and cooling for two thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars at the road barn. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed. Uh, discussion approval to pay property damages by road department on Trout Ridge Road to Kevin Mulligan for five thousand eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. I had asked the um, uh, road department to go out there uh, and measure that. It, uh, according to their measurements anyway, the, there's a 60-foot road easement on Trout Ridge. Um, the 30-foot from the center of the road well covers uh, what we did to, in, in that curve, to make the uh, it was reason or visible it was, it was issue, right. so it's on it's on the county right away what you're saying right. that's according to our county road department guys that went out there two of them went out and measured it and, and i also measured i measured it myself and it's all clearly on the county right away i will in a little bit of defense but it's still county right away i think i think they could have stayed away from the tree but it's still county right away the tree was on it too. Yeah, absolutely, the whole trunk of the tree is on county right away, and, and and it truly made a big difference in in the in that curve for safety uh, reasons. For safety reasons, right? Uh, in, in the future, when there's a project like this, can we possibly stake it and get with the property owners? Well, I think we, we actually actually I did call Kevin <coughs> early on uh, and ask him about it, okay. and he he said I'd, I'd like to ask my wife about it. And then several months went by, and he, uh, I never got a return call or anything. So Eddie asked me, had time to do it, and I said, you know, stay within county right away. And I had checked the uh, 
right away over here at the courthouse and knew, knew that we had 60 foot of right away on that road, so that's what we done. And I checked it also. Right. I wanted to make sure, so. Uh, and happened that Bobby Tree was in there um, um, when I was looking up the right of way, and he was actually the one that did the right of ways for all the property owners at that time. I think it was back in the 60s, I'm Probably. not sure. But anyway. You know, there's, there's lots of fences, I, I guess everything could be, there's lots of things on county right away that, that, you know, could be subject to, but if you need to work on it, you, got, you, you have the right to, to do well, it. Yeah, aren't aren't we liable need. if you don't have the vision right. and something happens? Well, no, you could be. Could be. I think it's a safety concern. I do too. Yeah. Judge, you got a question? May I say something? Yes. I did not have any of the conversations about this. They were with Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my understanding when you called David that you said that you would definitely let us know before anything was done. I think it's a principle of the matter that they came onto our property and just did what they wanted to do. It would not have been an issue had we been able to have been there, which is what we were told in the first place that we would be there. <coughs> um, the road department did come back after the fact, after we came home and said, oh my gosh, what have they done here? Um, there were dips in the, you saw it, Jerry. Um, you told us, yeah, give me damages, I'll take care <coughs> of it. Um, personally, I would have liked to have known that, yeah, this was, in the right of way before it came to this issue here and being on Facebook that <laughs> oh my gosh what are they talking about um, what I did do was we've had some uh, landscaping done at our house through Beaver Creek Nursery in Indiana I sent pictures of the tree to the gentleman there to ask him what can I do with this tree is this tree gonna live? Is this tree gonna die? Uh, and he said, that tree is not just a holly tree. That tree has been there way longer than any of us in this room. Um, he told us that it would be years of growth and intermittent trimming to get that tree back to where it was, if it ever gets to back to where it was. I think it is agreed that the tree was not in the way to begin with. The tree was not an issue in any way on site for that road. Uh, I do have pictures of the tree that I sent to my to Ken Welty at Beaver Creek if anyone likes to look at them. Um, after Ken said it's arboretum status, we can't I can't do anything about this, Kevin proceeded to get replacement trees. That's where the numbers came from. He only found trees out west. The price of the trees do not even include loading, transporting, or planting of a tree. We don't know whether that tree is going to live or not. Uh, also, dirt was hauled away. That is also in the uh, bid for damages. Had we been notified, we would have definitely used that good topsoil on our farm. We have plenty of places that we could have put it. In my understanding, Kim, I think they did rework the bank. They did. They came back. Uh, Mike Stewart came out. Mike Stewart contacted me and said, hey, I'm going to come out. Will you come look at this with me? So, and I did, and he corrected that. Okay. I know but I don't have my trees, and I have damage to a tree, and I don't have my dirt. I know when Kevin and I talked, I did tell him to submit an um, estimate of what the cost would be, and I would see what we could do. Um, so anyway, that's where we are. Well, I, I believe if you, if you, you know, you hope, you can't always know exactly what the road department's doing, what they're going to go out and do projects and things. I wasn't notified of it. I did talk to Kevin, but 
regardless of county right away. I don't think you can start paying for damage or for personal property on county right away. You know, you want to try to make it safe for people beyond those points, then sometimes you need to do what you need to do. Wasn't there an original ordinance um, where it was 30 feet from the center line of the road that was county, county right of way, and then it was amended up to where it was 60? Yeah, but the right of way's all changed. It, it was amended to 40. There, some, some of these older roads are. Actually, Coles Ridge and, and Trout Ridge have a 60 foot easement. But the, the, my question but is, is if, did that a tree, foot. if that tree's been there and if it was amended up, it would be grandfathered in. This one wasn't amended up. This was actual, the original uh, right of way was a 60 foot easement. Okay. I have a question. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, what you're saying is that, you know, the county can come in on our property on an easement, even though we're paying for that piece of the property and do what they want to, and then if they destroy something, they're not going to be liable for it. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think the same thing could be said um, for a utility company also, power line, uh, water, water line easement, power line easement, uh, you know, any easement, yeah, they got the right to come in. I understand that, but they, they, they come in and leave two foot ruts in your yard and somebody should fix it. Right, right. right. And we 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 fixed the bank. Uh, the tree that Kim's talking about, uh, we didn't. So. Because you can't. I, I can see why zoning passed because y'all don't care about what people's property look like. <laughs> Okay. No more discussion, I'm assuming, with the court. Uh, I'll put a pass on that. Okay, next item uh, discussion approval of pay increase for the jailer's current salary is $28,800. Uh, talking about increasing that to 34000 I don't know if he's here or not. Hey, Bob. Do you want to address the court? Or? I can. It's like a bad time. Hard <laughs> feelings. Uh, yeah, I want to get up, try to get up to basically what the rest of the state's paying for most of their jailers. The only jailer that makes what I make that I can find is Owen County and she has about six years in. No, seven years, that's to be her eighth year. Uh, she's the only one that makes that amount. The rest of it, like I said, I just want to get up to my, I mean, this may be my last term. I'd like to have a little retirement when I get done. Is part of it. And I can pay for most of it through the money the state paid me for transporting, uh, you know, circuit cases, you know, convicts. If you're convicted and you get a CR, then I can get paid most of that back through that. Any questions? I'll go ahead and make the motion to increase the jailer's salary to the thirty-four thousand. Thank you, Ken. Got a motion. Do I have a second? <coughs> what? What you? What you can make back, Bob, is that something you haven't been doing? I do it, but it, it, it runs into a case of uh, once I get to a certain point, they'd rather that I didn't put it in because the money's limited. But what I'll do, if that passes, I'll put it all in. I don't care what they, whether they like it or not, they'll have to pay it. But the way our cases are going now, it will be a surplus, trust me. We're at I'm at $900 that I'll be turning in just, and the month's not done. I'm just waiting on my paperwork from Stacy, and she does a great job. I can blame you. <laughs> we got motion on the floor. Uh, so 
so I'm assuming that's going to be a pass for right now also. Okay, next regular court meeting will be December 17th, 2018 at 9 a.m. at the County Extension Office. Uh, breakfast being provided by the Extension Office at 8 o'clock and the court meeting will be at 9. Ready for an adjournment. Motion is second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Okay.